Hey guys, everybody out there in YouTube and Twitch and Twitter and, uh, um, you know, all the good places, Facebook, MySpace, all of it. Uh, I just wanted to come to you and talk to you for a few minutes about your guitar journey. And, um, you know, you what inspired me, because I got some questions in my email on YouTube and I had somebody almost ask the exact identical question on um, uh, TikTok the other day. Uh, they asked me what inspired me, what made me want to play, what made me uh, want to move on with my play, and how did I get over the slumps the, from, from just being monotonous and playing the same thing over and over and over. And um, so I was really inspired by the blues. Like, um, I can remember at my elementary school, we had a music teacher named Mr. Dotson. And Mr. Dotson um, introduced us into music. He introduced us into all types of music, you know, every, anything and everything under the sun. And he made us play different instruments. Like he, the the the, the way I remember the class as being a kid was, he put each instrument on a different, uh, each student on a different instrument, and and it would last a semester. You would play this semester on, you know, the steel drum and next semester you're going to play on you know a stringed instrument you're going to figure out how to play a stringed instrument and he he did that with us but he introduced us to all different types of music doing that and, and as i told you like with a steel drum like you're thinking more of reggae and jamaican style music but well, he introduced us into that and um i basically said all that to say this is that he was really my first teacher that i saw play the blues and he played piano, so he played it. He played it on the piano, and uh, it just it put an interest in me at an early age from that point in time forward. Uh, fast forward about I don't know ten years until I'm about ten years old, and my dad buys a Robin's Egg Blue with a maple neck Fender Strat for me and my older brother. My brother's four years older than me, and um, he brought he bought this guitar, and I took it everywhere. Anywhere I could take it, I took it. I was trying to learn how to play and play and just do everything I could with it and just tried to make it my own. He actually bought it for us so that we would play in church. My brother was playing the drums but wanted to play the guitar, and he had a friend that he used to work with that told him he'd sell him one cheap. He sold it to him for 100 bucks, and it was actually like a six or $700 guitar at the time that he sold it. And... Um, so that's how we were, we acquired that, and that's how I got that and started carrying that thing around with me. And so, uh, you know, we were under the guise of playing for church, is learn how to play it for church. And then, you know, being in church and growing up in church, things happen. People come into your life, and they say things to you, and they're really influential on you. Well, my dad had a friend who lived in Dayton, and we would go to his house every once in a while, and they were all connected together with the church, and he prophesied over us. He told us that one would be uh, good at playing the guitar and one would be good at playing the drums. We would both play both. And um, I just stuck with guitar. After that, it was just like I just felt like I was supposed to play guitar and play what I wanted. And then I started reaching out and getting influenced by things. So um, the first real blues album that kind of really affected me and made me want to play, and this, this is crazy, was, was a John Mayer album. It was um, the Continuum album that John Mayer had. And I know that sounds crazy because it's, it's more poppy and everything, but the We're the Lightiest album was the one that I went, I really want to do that, like really want to do that, want to imitate that, want to figure it out, want to go through with it. And that was like the real standout album in my mind where I thought, you know, I can do what he's doing. I can play and do what he's doing or try to, try to em emulate it the best I could. And the truth is I can't, but I try. I try my best. Um, but that was the album that stuck out. And then other influential albums along the way are like Howlin' Wolf uh, really stuck with me. The London Sessions and Howlin' Wolf. And that had a little bit of everybody on it. Clapton's on it. Windward's on it. Um, you know, Howlin' Wolf itself is on it. Hubert Slumlin's on it. I mean, so you got a bunch of blues guitarists who are putting their putting their feel on old songs like Elmore James and CeCe Ryder. And, I mean, they're putting all their feel into that. 
and that was that's the album that sticks out in my mind. And there's a couple songs on that album that stick in my mind, like um, you know they do the Little Red Rooster take. They do two takes of the Little Red Rooster. You know they do the one that is not supposed to be recorded, but it was, and the one that actually was recorded. And uh, you know something like that. I ain't superstitious is another one. I ain't superstitious, but a black cat has crossed my path. Stuff like that sticks in my head and can go out. Um, and then uh, built for comfort. I ain't built for comfort. <laughs> you know stuff like that is 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 what sticks out in your mind. It sticks out in my mind when I think of it. And then, like I said, you know, it transitioned like different other different blues artists transitioned in and out. And I would listen to something. I go, I want to do that. And then a lot of soul, a lot of Memphis soul, a lot of Steve Cropper licks, um, kind of stuck out in my mind. And that's the type of influence I had. Is I wanted that bluesy soul um, sort of feel, but I can rock with other people that can rock. You know, like that's. That's where I was going with with wanting to play the guitar, and uh, you know, and along your journey, you're gonna have things that stick out to you. I know I've said a whole bunch of stuff, but you're gonna have a lot of things that stick out to you. You're gonna have a lot of times where you just don't want to play anymore, or you feel like you're not being used in the way that you're supposed to be used if you're playing with a band, or you you know you just you have conflicts with people that that come up and arise and play in bars, or just play what you like play songs you like, play rhythm you like, learn all you can about what you like. It, it's not necessarily about the style you want to play. It's just about playing and getting out there and having fun, having a lot of fun. If you notice, I do a lot of recordings in, in my bedroom or in the living room or in the kitchen or somewhere like that because that's where I think about you know stuff I want to play the most is it hits me like right then and there. You know, um, I really like the 60s and 70s style music, too. I mean, real real talk. I mean, I like like some of the 60s and 70s, like Steppenwolf and stuff like that. I mean, that's stuff that, that I can listen to on a regular basis and kind of get inspired by Boston and uh, things like that. But the, the truth of it is, is it's what you want to learn and how much are you willing to put into it to learn it. You can learn as much as you want. You can go note for note, or you can just go, I just want to play the chords and learn the song chord-wise, or maybe I just want to play a solo over them playing. Like So there's all sorts of places you can be on your journey in guitar. The thing is, is just don't give up and don't quit, and you just keep playing, and eventually what will happen is you'll make your own sound. You'll become uniquely you. Um, as far as writing my own stuff, and playing my own stuff on TikTok and on YouTube and things like that, you know, I don't make any money. <laughs> like, like I'm just doing that strictly for fun. And I want people to think, you know, think about history, think about the stuff that goes on. That's why I name the stuff the way that I name it is because I want you to look it up and I want you to see what was actually going on and what inspired me to make that piece for that time period. Um. And there's stuff that's even going on now. Like I constantly get questions like, why did you name this? Or why did you do that? Or what's this about? Well, that's what it's about is it's about you finding out what happened in history on that day or you finding out what uh, what Cleopatra did, why she had a legion, for instance. That's one of the videos that I posted. Um, and that's really it is it's just about getting yourself out there, playing, having fun, when you get monotonous and it just starts getting um, boring, I guess you could say, find something else to play that interests you. You don't have to play the same thing for 10 hours a day. Even though you're going to play some of the same chords and some of the same rhythm, you don't have to play the same song. Think of other songs that have the same thing. There's a million songs with three chords. Millions. And that's all they got is the three chords. Just find the one that interests you and play it. All right, guys. Um, I may have not answered everything. I tried to the best I could. But I'll see you next time. And hopefully next time I'll be rocking some guitar. Have some adventures, my friend. Have some camel toe adventures.